Hello everybody, how you doing today? I hope you're having a good day. It's another day the Lord has made and for some of you it's already the Lord's day and for the rest of us uh, that's coming tomorrow. So we're looking forward to meeting with the saints. All right, today's lesson is called Oh Magnify the Lord. And so we, we, we need to ask the question, what does this really mean to magnify the Lord? And how can we do it today? Well, in, in Psalm 34, verses 1 through 4, one of my favorite chapters, uh, it starts off, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. I mean, that's a beautiful passage. And so we, we, we sometimes, uh, there's a little story about how big is God? I mean, here, the story goes like this. One day, a young lad asked his father the question, how big is God? And after thinking about it, he looked up in the sky and saw an airplane flying overhead. He told his son that God was as big as that airplane. And the lad was not sure about that. I mean, that, that looks awful small to me. And a few days later, they happened to be at the airport, and the father asked his son if he remembered their conversation a few days earlier. So then he took the son to see the, an airplane up close. And the lad marveled and expressed his awe. And the father told him that when you keep God away from you, he appears very small. But when you get close to him, he is much, much bigger. And so there's a lesson that we need to learn about that. We need to keep God close. And that way we'll recognize how awesome and great and how big he actually is. And so when we consider to magnify the Lord... I mean, let, let's, let's face it, as, as some of us uh, have already found out, when, as we age, our eyesight sometimes gets worse. And we find that we need the assistance of a magnifying glass to help us see small things and read the smaller print. And so, the, does the magnifying glass make things bigger? No, it is not bigger. But the appearance in our vision makes it seem bigger. And so... Just like we read in the psalm, would it be great to be delivered from all of our fears? I mean, God does that, and it appears the psalmist had figured out the secret about 3,000 years ago. And so when God is magnified, we don't make God bigger. We merely recognize him better through that focus for which he really is. And so when God is magnified, Fear is minimized. That, that's what the passage tells us. I mean, if God is away from us and far away when problems arise, we, we, we seem to be overwhelmed by it. But when we recognize God is near, then our problems uh, are minimized and they don't seem such big obstacles. And, and so when we look at it, fear and a right view of God will find it hard to coexist. And so, if my heart is filled with fear, I am not rightly estimating God in his capacities and his interest in my care and in my life. And yet, when we learn to trust him, many of our fears go away. And this is what God wants. He wants it this way. You know, as we read in Philippians 4, 6, and 7, says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, shall guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And Peter said it this way in 1 Peter 5, 7, says, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you at the proper time, casting all your anxiety upon him because he cares for you. And so throughout the Bible, in situations where the odds are against the people of God, we see that God helps them to overcome, sometimes even miraculously. And we might consider like the story of Gideon, who had a huge army to fight, but God got him down to 300 soldiers. 
and the story of the conquest of Canaan as Joshua led the people to take the land. And David, when he faced the giant, I mean, that, that just seems like insurmountable odds. We have another story in 2 Chronicles 20, and we read of a fearful episode, and Judah was threatened with an impressive force of surrounding nations that decided that Judah was easy pickings, and they came against Jehoshaphat, the fourth king of, of Judah. And in verse 1, uh, that, that's what it tells us. And so, and we also know Chronicles is famous for big odds. And we often find that God's people were few and God's enemies were many. And when God was forgotten, the odds were overwhelmingly bad. And when God was magnified, the odds didn't matter anymore. So Jehoshaphat was, a, was the king and he, he was not an evil king, but he was not entirely a good king either. I mean, let's just say he was very wishy-washy at times in his life. And, and, but this event turned out to be a shining moment for Jehoshaphat. I mean, we might compare him to Peter. Sometimes Peter was a little off and sometimes he was on. And so uh, we see that. But like we read in the Psalm, in Psalm 34, here in 2 Chronicles 20, Jehoshaphat was afraid and he set his face to seek the Lord. I mean, the odds were overwhelming and there's no way they could defend against such a great army. And so at this time, what shall I do? I mean, you sit there, fret and worry, what am I gonna do? And what's a way out of this? Then all of a sudden he decided to set his face to seek the Lord. And folks, that's what we should be doing also. When we think we've got overwhelming odds against us, Turn it over to the Lord. And so after a fast, the king gathered the people and magnified the Lord. And then as we continue reading in verses 6 through 12, see Jehoshaphat speaks a prayer in the midst of the people. And it's very motivational uh, speaking. And he turns the whole problem over. We've got this great army out there. What are we going to do? I tell you what, we're just going to turn it over to the Lord. And, and so, as we read in this prayer, verses 6 through 12, in verse 12, here's what it says. He says, O oh, our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we are powerless before this great multitude who are coming against us, nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are on thee. I mean, what a great way to end a prayer. We don't know what to do, but you know what? Our eyes upon you. We're going to focus on you, and we we trust that you're going to take care of the matter. And so, folks, that's what we, we, we always do. I mean, we may not always know what to do in our own situations, but if we can learn to look to God and focus on God, I mean, he will become bigger, and all these little fears that we have should diminish. If, we, if they don't diminish, then that just means we don't put our trust in God. And so we, we shouldn't have fear when the presence of God. Because we know God's going to take care of God's going to take care of it. We have to have that faith. And so when we magnify the Lord, we can see him more clearly. We can see him as much bigger, a lot closer to us. And... Uh, it, I can understand the difficulty as young people try and work God into their lives and, and things like that. But as, as we age, we get older, we get closer to that time. We want to make sure we're right with God. And so we focus on God a lot more clearly. And so uh, we magnify the Lord so that we can admit that we bring little to the battle. I mean, it's, it's not about me. It's about him. And so we don't have to bring much because the battle belongs to the Lord. I mean, this statement was made in the Old Testament, and we have a song that, 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 that uh, we sing sometimes. The battle belongs to the Lord. And so we just learn that the closer we get to God, the bigger he's going to be for us. And all we have to do is draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. 
Anytime you get closer, like that airplane, you get closer to the airplane, it seems a lot bigger. And so that's the way God is. We draw near to God. We make the effort to draw near to God. And guess what? God's going to be right there for us. And he's going to be there. And so in James 4, 8, we read that. So here's just some thoughts here this morning. And like I said, when you have fear, fear because of the obstacles or the situation you might be in, it might be health issues, it might be financial issues, to put your focus on God. Look to God and say, I'm turning it over to you. That's what Peter said we should do. Cast your cares upon him because he cares for you. All right, simple lesson day, short lesson, but that's okay. Uh, hopefully you'll get the message. And uh, if you will, share this message with others. Uh, very simple one, but uh, yeah, magnify the Lord. Make him a lot bigger in your own life, and hopefully your example will cause others to make him bigger in their lives. All right, so you have a good day. Enjoy your time with the saints, and we'll be back with another lesson, Lord willing. Bye-bye for now.